The outfit, called named Shege Kafasa, is designed to be the vanguard of the entire North, encompassing every ethnic group and religion, and to be deeply patriotic in its operation. Three, in addition to performing general complementary tasks for enhancing security in the region, the outfit shall also A, coordinate operations against the influx of hard drugs into the North, B, take steps to neutralize all centers of gravity for the supply, manufacture, and distribution of such drugs and other dangerous substances. Welcome back. We've got to Mr. Evan Tufeli, who is a legal practitioner here with us. Uh, thank you for coming on this morning. Thank you. Good morning. Well, quite a number of things happening uh, out there. Today, we did see several reports about uh, lead stories on security. Uh, the VP, interestingly, did ask the elites to speak up uh, on this matter. The IGP asking the governors, wake up to your responsibility. And the CIA asking the government to declare a state of emergency on security now. So. It just appears as though with all of these things they're saying, I mean, even those who are supposed to take certain necessary steps appear to be shirking responsibility, instructing what they appear to be. How do you see the same thing, that people seem to be passing bulk, or these are processes you think will naturally play out before we then take those very next steps? Well, I think that uh, the, the breakdown we have today in, in terms of the security architecture of the country is as a result of a long neglect of uh, the citizens, you see, because um, the, 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 the law is in section 14, subsection 2 of the 1999 constitution that says the security and welfare of the people shall be the primary purpose of government. But where you have a country where you have the absence of both, you have no security, you have no welfare package for the people, then the people will begin to constitute themselves into the problems that we have today. And that is what we have because uh, the government have not been able to put adequate measures for citizens to be able to earn their livings legitimately. Is the law so, ambiguous so, about these things? Why is it that they seem to be saying, no, you do this, you do that? Doesn't the law specify who should be doing what? No, the law is not ambiguous. The law is clear on functions. Section 214, subsection 1, 2, and thereabouts, talks about the creation of the police force yeah. for the purposes of... Uh, maintaining law and order, protection of life and properties okay, in a civil society. Section 217 talks about the creation of the military okay, to address external aggression. Okay, just take it like that. You find it all in the Constitution. The, the, the creation and the purpose and functions are all in the Constitution. You can have the best of constitution, you can have the best of um, enactment, but when the citizens or the people have issues of economic concern, okay? And they have issues of education because the lack of education also, if you look at the North, for example, the insurgency uh, is as a result of a breakdown of the access to quality education. And education is the ornament of prosperity and refuge in adversity. If you do not fix that, you can't adequately fix security. So that is exactly what we're having. We're having a big problem. And Nigeria is a country that don't guard against what the people get, that gets into the people in terms of religion and ideology and philosophy. There are countries where they, they guard against what the people read, what the people uh, react to, what the people are exposed to, the kind of ideology they concord and contrive in, in, in society. But Nigeria is a free society where people develop dangerous ideologies okay, and trench it, and then use it to form a sect. And from there, people, uh, security issues arise. Then when you look at it also, you ask yourself whether the government is really on top of the situation. Is the government really doing the needful to, to, to look at the security issues, for example? They, they, are, they are there, they, they are there, they, they, we've had situations that has questioned their competence. They have been found wanting, they are still there, the president still maintains these same people who have not been able to deliver. 
So why can't we change them if we are serious about it? Why do we have uh, even some of the soldiers compromising with the enemy to, to create problems for society? Why do we have all that if we are serious? Is, is, that, is, is that, that clear cut, that you have some of the soldiers compromising with the enemy? It's clear. It's very clear cut. Because, specific circumstances. No, no, let me give you, I, I, because I relate with some of these soldiers, and I've been uh, privileged to have certain information about the operation. Like when they design the operation for the week, okay, the plan for the week against the insurgent, immediately that is done, the insurgent is aware. So what has happened? Okay, that is why you find that they are always ambushed because we have some of the enemies within, this, within the security agencies. So that must be dealt with. The former president once said that his government had been infiltrated by Boko Haram. That yeah, is but, a privileged information. Can we escalate that and say they are soldiers? Because, I mean, we, we do know that, you know, you have rogue agents in different areas, and so they perform certain functions. But when you then pluralize that, say, it does appear as though there is a grand plan which has been no, I'm, I'm by a group no, of people. No, I'm not talking about, about a grand plan. I'm saying that there are bad eggs within the system. And then the, the security chiefs must be able to uncover that. Are they unaware of this? They are not unaware. They are not unaware because we listen to them and then we, we see how they relate to issues. Because uh, the, the insurgency, for example, Boko Haram, for example, is a very big business. Has become a very big business for whom? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For for certain persons who have interest in in in, in the continuity of that war to ensure their economic well-being, to feed their greed at the expense of Nigerians, and that is what is going on. So that must be tackled. If we are serious about it, that's why I said that the president must take decisive decision, because you are going to be having all that. Just yesterday we heard about the operation Shege Kafasa. I mean, uh, the Northern Security Initiative, Regional Security Initiative. Some uh, months back or some weeks back, we had the Amoteku, okay? That, that federal structure that we have refused to create. Are they comparable? Uh, uh, well, well uh, they, they are comparable because they are both uh, state-owned functions, when you say security that, functions. Okay, well, the one uh, Southwest Security Network, the governors participated in that one. But with this one, the northern one, can you authoritatively say that they, the governors... They, they have similarities and dissimilarities because uh, I've heard one of the uh, leaders in the north say that they were not consulted to that effect. I've heard that, but... To the, to the northern, this new one? Yes, the new one. police, actually. Yes. The, 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 there are discordant tunes over there, uh, and just as we have it in all no, but, but from the point of law, do these group have it within the law to do what they've done? They have it within the law if they start with a legislation. Because in Nigeria, we have this... We, we, we have this uh, uh, if this, this coalition, if this group that set it up starts with a law, I don't understand that part. No, if the creation yeah. starts with a legislation from the State House of Assembly of the state where the oppression is initiated, Okay. Yeah, but were they elected into office to provide security for the lives and property of who? I mean, the governors or who? No, this is not. Is this from northern governors? No, it's, it's not coalition. from northern governors. It's just a coalition. It's yeah. just a coalition. They, 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 are not, they are not elected, but they can also bring uh, individual bills. An individual can sponsor a bill. It's, it's allowed. You can sponsor a bill as an individual through your, you know, the, your representative. In, in other the, words, in the, national, in the House of Assembly. In other words, this Northern Group's um, initiative is illegal. Well, at this point, if it has not gone through legislation, it is not legal. It does not have a binding force. Because if you look at the Constitution Section 1, it says this Constitution is supreme, and it provisions shall have a binding force on all persons and authority throughout the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Now, if okay. people, if, if people, so, sorry to, for jumping in, if people like the Northern Forum, this you know, group of people, the Southwest governors and a number of other in initiatives in the Middle Belt and all of them are coming up with, what does this say about the 
security architecture that you started with. You talked about the national security architecture being hard pressed and all of that. What does it say about that architecture if these pockets of uh, initiatives are coming discordantly? Yeah, it's because the, the architecture has long collapsed. That is why we have, even there are, there are offenses today that were no offenses in, in five, four years ago. Uh, kidnapping, for example, now we have a law, you know, domesticated in most of the states. You understand? We have new offenses being created as a result of the breakdown. We have banditry now. We have insurgency. Before now, terrorism wasn't part of our, our, our problems. But today, it has become the fulcrum of national disintegration and public attack. Okay? So it is because the center has collapsed. The security architecture is near collapse. So what we have now is a problem that we must begin to look for solution. What the people are doing now is reactionary, even in the Southwest. That is why they push for the Amoteco even without. And, and then the creation of the law became an afterthought. The, the national security strategy that was launched sometime late last year, uh, the NSA said that this is going to be more focused for the people, focused towards the people, more about the people than the regime. Uh, but do you think the security architecture as we have it now supports that policy? No, I don't think so. Because when you say the security is more for the people, and then you have, you have a police force where almost half the number is guiding the rich, or I almost have the number, uh, we take care of the elites. And then once you have the fallout, the fallout is, there are certain police stations, as a lawyer I'm privileged to understand this, there are certain police stations you go to, you will not find more than seven operatives, seven policemen, in, those, in a community. So, I mean, that is just rhetorics. Are they meant to be in the police station, and they meant to be in the field also? Maybe perhaps they were in the field at that point. Oh, well, the police station is their base. But they shouldn't stay there all through it. Well, they, they go for operation. I understand they go for operation. But what I'm telling you, you and I understand, know that we are under police. Look at the population. Look at the number of police force. I mean, we're under police. So if you have a strategy or you have a, a national security plan or project, it should be that. And if, if you say that it's basically for the people, to protect the people, then you must show that in terms of... Uh, uh, facts. You must bring the visible numbers. Let the people see how this is true. Mm. But I mean, we don't. We, we know what is going on today in society. We don't have all that. All that. Uh, we're not secured. We're not secured. You know, when we began this conversation, we started by you know reeling out some of the responses we've gotten from leaders, from the Inspector General of Police to the Speaker of the House of Representatives to even the President. That editorial he put out, then the Vice President speaking about national unity. But is this there's this part, for example, the Speaker of the House asking the IGP to do more, and then the IGP saying that, you know what, governments or governors, in fact, should, you know, step up in their role. So where is the primary role of security? Is it with the government, uh, you know, providing jobs such that there wouldn't be unemployment or at least providing a suitable environment for employment to take place? Or is it with the heads of security ensuring that the security architecture is firm. Where does this start from? Both must work effectively. Both, both must work in unison. For the governors, the governors must be creative enough to you know, create employment in their states or create an environment that will enable for... Because when, when, when people like the uh, current uh, Minister for Transportation was on this show some days ago. He did say that if all of us were working in Shell, that, I mean, the, who will carry arms against the other? There will be no need for that. So if we have a government that have not been able to make life, you know, um, livable for the people, <laughs> we're, we're going to continue to have this kind of problem. Because government must step up to her responsibility. Enough of this... Uh, uh, that security network there, that security, these, these are reactions. Now, the, the National Assembly, sometime in 2018, had an opportunity to tinker with this federal structure thing we talk about. 
most of them voted against devolution of power. And that would have created um, a, a process for the reform. Because when, when the states now have the capacity to handle their issues and then contribute to the center, it will be easier for them to okay, create jobs for the people. And besides, if you look at the Nigerian state, for example, we keep talking about unemployment, we keep talk, talking about the hardship and all that. But if you take, let's look at the maritime sector, for example, we have, how many seaports do we have in Nigeria? Those are the problems, okay? If you open up this seaport, you are gonna create employment in those regions. Look at Lagos Ibanon Expressway. It has been under construction for the past 25 years. Okay, why don't you get the youth coppers who are civil engineers, get them on that road with the contractors? And then let that be a center point for which employment is created. Okay, so I mean, invest in IT technology, train the citizens, give them proper education, uh, disband religion. How do you mean? Yes, I, 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 I know it's controversial. No, but, no, I just said, how yeah, do you yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah, what I mean is, what I mean is, this banning religion, what I mean is that there should be strict regulation on religion. We must, see, there is a connection between religion and insecurity. It's a dangerous, you see, because when government steps up and provides for the people and create the enabling environment, and then the people are not gainfully employed, we are going to face a new set of crises, and that is a crisis of ideology, so, fundamentalism. So when you say this ban okay. religion, yeah, what no, happens? Regulate it. Regulate okay. religion such that, we, we, I know countries where religion is strictly re regulated. I mean, there's a country in Africa today where you don't just come up and begin to throw up ideologies well, for people. Laws, so. I think they'll be acting in consonance with their laws. Yeah, that's what I'm Our saying. laws here. Now what I'm saying, so. when I say this ban religion, I'm talking about create the laws that will regulate religion. And speaking about the laws, uh, when you say the National Assembly, a lot of them voted against the devolution of powers uh, at that time. What do you expect them to do now since, I mean, they themselves did pass that resolution on the sacking of service chiefs. They've had meetings, the leadership now of uh, the National Assembly. They've had meetings with the president and I think they talked about, they detailed journalists that they spoke about the service chiefs. What next steps? do you think we should all take, or well, they should yeah, take? Yeah, talking about the sacking the service chief, that's just a short-term solution, okay? You think it's a solution? It, it's a, yeah, it's a solution because we need um, a new set of persons to test them, put their competence to test, because these ones have failed already. I mean, the, you, you, if you talk, they will tell you it's gorilla word, that because it's gorilla, what, then what, that, what does that mean? These people come in from a track. Intercept them there, that's your duty, develop the the military strategy to do that and do it. That is it. So there, there should be no uh, guerrilla war, no guerrilla war. It's, 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 not, it's not tenable anywhere. So, I mean, even the, the, that is a short-term plan for me. The, the real plan we have to develop is to go back to the grassroots. Do you know that there are some secondary schools in Nigeria where children sit on the floor to learn? They sit under the tree to learn. And these are the people that you are going to uh, 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 use as future leaders. Okay, There's no so way you sit on the floor to let you will not become a criminal. So it's, how, it's how, just uh, uh, clear. How should we approach the laws concerning the next steps that the National Assembly should take? Should they face that conversation about what do we do with all these regional groups coming up with security, strategy, agencies? How should we approach it? First of all, the, the regional groups or the, the states creation or, 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 or all that they, they are the problem of their respective states in a way because if they use their houses of assembly to bring those security agencies to operation, the National Assembly cannot uh, pass a resolution against it. So what the National Assembly should do mm -hmm. is to now cooperate with the state houses of assembly that so desire that this institution function support them, okay? Give them their own suggestions and solutions to the problem. Because this issue of, uh, it's illegal, don't do it. The constitution say uh, it's only the police. Uh, it's contrary to section 214. Will not lead us anywhere. The reason it will not lead us anywhere is because uh, we have left the primary assignment. Yeah. And then we have left the issue of uh, amending the constitution to reflect federalism. But do you think there will ever be a time in the future, nearest future, 
that these regional groups might be rendered redundant. I mean, if we're saying that, we need to look into state police, community police. And do you think there might be a time that these groups might be rendered redundant? How? If we if we still continue the centralization, no, no. If we if we decentralize police, it, like I said, if, if we if we look into state police and show that you know it is working well, is there a possibility that these groups might be rendered redundant? It cannot be rendered redundant because what we have now is a case where you have the federal government managing the police force. The federal government have no competence in that area. If it is decentralized, that's what I'm saying. If it's decentralized, yes. that the the Regional, yeah, the states now have you know more power uh, when it comes to police. Do you think these groups, they're not the police? There, there's yet. a possibility. There's a possibility. But remember that their function is not even uh, policing in terms of um, physical oppression or what, what I say, active oppression. It's more of guarding of intelligence. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what what we should be talking about is that uh, there is no amount of intelligence that is um, too much for the safety and protection of lives and property. So if they get to that stage where perhaps their function has been reduced so minimal, perhaps they will reduce their workforce. But then, because these are people in the community who can actually, because if you look at even the, the fight against insurgency, it's as a result of community policing that the military even got a high stride. Because the community people know those persons. I mean, you, do, yeah, those the civilian JTF. Yes, yeah, the civilian JTF. Because if you look at the Boko Haram, for example, uh, most people say they are from Chad, they are from here, they are from there. But you see them marks up. They marks up because they know that there are certain persons that know them. They are here. They are from here. So I mean, that is that is what I think. Because if we don't do this, if we don't maintain all these security agencies and all that, we are still going to have problems. Because all we right. need information to disband this insurgency. Mr. Evan Tufeli, thank you for coming on this morning. Well, back in a moment, stay with us.